time. Oh, they do lose control with two points left to go. Oh, oh. Please, no. Don't, I don't want to do this. Only a little bit of a push along the side here. Three people down, about to be four people down. No, Never this mind is my you fault. That guy. It is all my fault. <laughs> this is their opportunity. They have one shot at this. Everyone is on the point right now, but there's just so much opposition. They can't what the flank they they don't have anybody near the zone. They put three people on that back side. This double inkjet isn't going to touch the zone. I don't think these specials are going to do anything. And welcome back, everyone, to Long Island Splat 4. We're going into Grand Finals. My name is Melissa Asset Sunshine, and today I'm joined by Hangman. Grand Finals. We're here, and we are getting the run back that we have so proclaimed. It's going to be Invertebrates versus Demise. Now, just as a refresher, for those of you who are just tuning in or weren't able to watch round four play, uh, Invertebrates had beaten Demise 3-1. So... Uh, just, you know, asking a little bit of the crew for predictions uh, earlier on. We have some for Invertebrates going to take it, Demise running it back. What do you think, Melissa? Honestly, I think uh, Hitzel is just, he wants it too bad. <laughs> I think Invertebrates has a really good chance here. Do you think they're going to take it? I think so. I really do. I think that, you know, the past couple of Long Island Splats, he has wanted it so bad and just come so close each time. And I think that really this is going to be it for him. Judging by the play that we've seen from Invertebrates, I would be inclined to agree. Like, it's it's been really good for them so far. Um, being as we are going into set play, there's a bit more of opportunity for momentum to settle in between each of the uh, individual sets. Now, for those who aren't particularly familiar with this style of play, Melissa, would you like to fill in people how set play works? For sure. So what we're going to be doing now is it's three sets of best of three. So for the first set, we'll be playing Clam Blitz, starting on Inkblot Art Academy. The losers of that first game will have losers pick from any of our Clam Blitz pools throughout the day. And the loser of that game, if it goes on to a game three, will have pick there. So if, say, uh, Demise wins the first two games here, they've won that set of Clam Blitz. Then it goes on to set two. And let's say that... Um, Invertebrates, Invertebrates wins uh, Macomart and Demise takes the middle game and Invertebrates wins the third, they would win set two. As it goes on to set three, that becomes kind of this tiebreaker. So what is going to be um, happening is the whatever team wins two sets will take the entire match. So it's a really fun, a different way that we like to do things here. And it's great for grand finals when you have, you know, two specific teams. They can really show off what they're strong at for specific modes. And I think it's just like a really interesting way to do finals. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I'm curious to see like how the match, how like the flow of the matches works. Just because set play introduces such a different dynamic compared to uh, uh, traditional competitive Splatoon. For also. sure. And starting off with Clam Blitz, I also feel is uh, very much a uh, a break from the uh, the norm. I think that's great. You you are the, uh, the the most stout of Clam Blitz defenders, and in certain situations, I say Clam Blitz is actually really good. But just looking at the map pool for what we have, we finally get Clam Blitz and Chovy games. Mm -hmm. I have been dreading it. I know you haven't. I don't know about the players. It's a fun one, honestly. I think it could be a lot harder. It could be a lot more challenging. You know, if you are waiting for an opportunity where you're just, like, looking for something that, you know, you want on all the rest of the Clam Blitz maps, you're not going to have it on Anchovy. You know, you have multiple avenues that you can get to the basket. It's a lot closer to spawn. It's easier to defend. I think a lot of the specials don't really yield themselves to using them to get right in. It's a lot harder to get baller in there. It's a lot harder to get um, a booyah bomb past that kind of like vertical wall that separates from the basket in that corner. So, you know, there's just a lot of different things that you can kind of use in your arsenal that you'd use in other maps that you can't really use here. And then so. just taking a quick look to the potential counter picks because we are still running the counter pick system for set play. Uh, loser pick has an opportunity to play Clan Blitz onto Manta Maria, Humpback, Pump Track, and Piranha Pit. I think if this goes for three games, the two maps that I would want to see Clan Blitz on 
are Manta Maria and Humpback Pump Tracks. I really like Piranha Pit Clam Blitz. I think that it's a really fun one to play. It's very open, really long, but that's the problem. It's really long. Yes, I feel like even though it is such an open-ended map, it lends itself to a very linear play and lends itself to just a Stingray Hellstorm, which mm -hmm. we've grown accustomed to seeing in certain map mode combinations. Um, but I also feel Humpback Pump Track, one of the best uh, maps for Clam Blitz in general. And then Manta Maria also a bit underappreciated. If this does go to a game three, I would not be surprised to see those. Uh, nonetheless, we do start with Anchovy Games for our grand finals. Uh, lobbies up, players are ready, <laughs> and the battle begins. Here we go, Invertebrates versus Demise. Quick look at the loadouts ahead of us. We see the uh, Zinc Mini and Hitzel's hands looking to support his team well as we look at the rest of the loadouts. And this is pretty much what we saw earlier when we had to see Invertebrates play uh, Demise. Team rocking the tra uh, Trent Umbrella as well. So, this seems part of the course for them. We'll see how well Demise responds as both teams open pretty heavily with just trying to make sure there's ink on the ground. Yeah, I think that that's like really important there. Henry getting taken out by those missiles. I think the missiles are going to be, you know, pretty used pretty heavily in this map too, because they can cover a lot of ground that you might not be able to cover otherwise. First power clam coming up on the side of the invertebrates. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to keep it though. Jarius is looking for a way to break in and finally found it coming up this right side, but unfortunately no one is there to support him. So if he doesn't get these picks that he needs. Jumping into the basket, has a few this ways. The bubbles are out, using the beacon. Great and beacon immediately placement. popping his uh, his inkjet so he can try and hold down the point. We also see the Stanford come out. This is a very rough push from Invertebrates. They're looking to make a statement with their initial push. Absolutely wonderful use of that Tentabrella too. Using the Brella to hide and you're tossing clams as it moves throughout. Exactly what we want to see here. This looks like it's the end of the push there, but I think 47 is a really nice amount of points to have. Yeah, it's even worth noting that this isn't too aggressive as far as the uh, the penalty points go. Like if they get a push like that again, that could be curtains for Demise. Before Demise even attempts their own push, they've really just been playing on the back pedal from the gate. And it's not the best way to play this, I feel. Yeah, I think Dreyas decides just for self-preservation to kind of hop out there. There are two power clams over on the side of Demise, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if they threw it or it doesn't look like anyone went down, so they must have thrown it just to get some of the attention off here. And I wonder if that one's going to despawn. Nope, the two people have it. That was so from how deep that inkjet snipe. That's what inkjets do. But someone was camping the point, so that's it's really Dreyas. hard. Dreyas right there, ready to take it out. So if Dreyas can get this pick, very nice job there. And that power clam might not last a whole lot longer. You know, talking about ghosting earlier with Dreyas, this man just haunts Demise at every step of the way. Even as Invertebrates stays very evasive with their movements as a squad, we constantly see Dreyas break from the pack so that he can pick off any of the problem children from Demise. For sure. And I mean, you know, Dreyas plays on a sponsored team as well on Hive. Beautiful double by Dreyas. Has all of these clams right here. Builds a power clam, tosses it, moves over to pick up a couple more. I wonder if this is where we're going to begin to see some of this like clam juggling happen. Pops the Stingray. Going to provide some nice support from above. Look at these Dreyas. pops. Can anybody stop this fighting machine? Look at this. It's a team wipe on the side of Demise. This is really where it's coming. So they come in, they break that basket again. They do need quite a few single clams in here to be able to break this down, but not a whole lot. So I think that this is it if, I think that's a Rashi over in the corner there, gets a few and Dreyas picks up a couple more. So Hitzel is right there using some defense. This is it, they only need a few more. And the clams are available to them. It's just a matter of stopping A as they come around and just one like more. that, one more clam to end it off and it goes right in. And will a powerful start to grand finals. And this is something to be said too that we haven't quite mentioned. Today there is a prize bonus of $240 on the table for the winning team. So, hey, I am I'm subscribed. 15 kills. 15 kills. Yeah, listen, it's the time of the season to start buying presents, so a little bit of extra money in the pocket goes a long way now. To so get a quick look at these plays, just really good picks from Dreas and that was a very similar note to what we had previously with Invertebrates, is just Dreyas is constantly hunting down the members of Demise. 
And if they can't stop him, he's able to cover the entire team nearly on his own. Absolutely wonderful play here. And I, I have to tell you, Hive is my, my favorite team. So watching some of my favorite players play in real life is like absolute joy for me. And being able to watch them do this, I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, only a little, only a tiny little bit. But, you know, I mean, when you have such great teams, there are so many of them that are absolutely wonderful. Demise has been a fan favorite here for such a long time, too. They've come to every one of our events. They've won quite a few Long Island splats. So I think that they have a really great opportunity to take this, too. I'm not, you know, saying down anything on them. They definitely can win this. Although, if this game one was anything to talk about, it's going to be a rough call just because of how aggressive a start this was. And it seemed like there was a very set-in-stone game plan from the get-go. Let Dreas hunt down whoever he feels. Arashi with the immediate support to Dreas. And then Keenan Hitzel pulling out back, trying to make sure there's just plenty of avenues for all members of Invertebrates to maneuver themselves, position themselves well. And we really didn't get a chance to see Hitzel go in for many fights. He stayed towards the back, tried to peel pressure away from Arashi and from uh, Dreas. And it was such a solid game plan because at no point did Demise look like they had any idea of how to fight this. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I think Hitzel did a great job just defending that back line, playing that Zinc Mini exactly how he knows how. And, you know, it's going to be a great thing to watch how Demise goes into this next one. Exactly as I thought, too. They did pick Humpback Pump Track. So I'm really excited to watch Clams on that because it's a very different um, play style than Anchovy. So it's going to be really nice to see what Demise can do here. And Blitz on Humpback Pump Track is such a blessed combination. Mm -hmm. Like, if, the, if you ever want to convince someone to try this map, uh, this ma mode, like, this is, this is the way you get people to like Clam Blitz. Well. Just saying. This is the good one. <laughs> Nonetheless, looking at what we've got ahead of us, and we're looking at two duelies on the side of Invertebrates this time, and very much the same on the side of Demise. Looks like mobility is going to be key from both sides. It's going to be pretty heavy firefights, I feel. Yeah, that double dually comp has been a thing for a little while. I think that this is really going to help Demise a little more with their movement. Um, this map is also really nice, though, because they are able to kind of come around in a lot of these pits, which is probably why you like it, too. You have so many different avenues where you can shark around, wait for someone to come in with a power clam, and just pop right up and take them out. So we're going to see how, I believe this is pro on the Explosher does here. And just waiting around, looking for a couple of picks. The Booyah's coming out. You know, everybody's just having a good time so far. The place starts to go into motion as Demise makes the first break. However, it looks to be a very unconvincing play. Just the initial break. It's not really much you can do without any team support. But little by little, I suppose Demise can move this forward. They're going to have to have a bit more of a uh, convincing press as a lot of this fight has centered itself around center stage. Ooh, the dueling ink jets do go down to each other. I believe that was um, from that custom blaster. So Keen is waiting with this Brella. Decides to pop bubbles too. Unfortunately, does get taken out from behind. So that's going to make it so that this power clam has option. Does it despawn? No, it goes in from Arashi. Great job, who has a couple of extras who's going to toss them in to get an early lead in this game. Because there's still plenty of time left. Keen quick to drop in, drop in a beacon of his own, try to pull a little bit of a uh, offensive front as they get a little bit more points in there. It's a very messy play, though. Nonetheless, Invertebrates comes out on top as it looks like the net's coming to a close with no one to really cap. And Keen is able to kill once again, building up his own defenses with the uh, the tent umbrella. Absolutely I'm, wonderful. I'm with so you. I was questioning sure. the, uh, the, the weapon pick earlier. And just seeing how self-sufficient Keen has been with that weapon, just very impressive just to see it evolve. I think the Tentabrella for Clan Blitz has is, is gotten so strong. It's definitely something that you know we haven't seen, but it's, it's been finding its place within this meta. And I think it's when you have a strong player like Keen has shown that when he can play it, I think it's, it's even better. So it's definitely something that I want to continue seeing within the meta and see people play. So it's really about how can you use it to defend, how can you use it to push forward. And, you know, it's pretty good in a map like this where you have those little alleyways that can cover a whole alley. Beautiful Ooh, double quick, by quick. Zero. Zero's been doing a really good job of trying to move around and play defensively. 
doing a really good job of just opening up a lot of the uh, defenses that Invertebrates is establishing. And just like that, pretty confident lead is established. Yeah, completely. Able to build that baller really fast too and use it to um, just kind of continue to keep this basket open. Unfortunately, Zero does go down and Gons is on the bottom. Just needs three more. And there we go. If they can get one more in. Yo, he's sitting with no clams. No one point. Clams. Oh my god. The gosh. sadness that ensues. Oh my gosh. That net is going to close. And just like that, Demise loses their opportunity to oh. win. And that is a brutal point. Look at that. That broke my heart just Oh, like. F's in the chat. Oh, man. One way or another, this is a golden opportunity for Invertebrates to turn this around because they have a much more lenient um, penalty to break down. And given the plays that we've seen out of Invertebrates already, it shouldn't be that bad of an issue for them to break that apart. Meanwhile, Demise definitely has that work cut out for them. For sure. I think this is really where Invertebrates need to come back together and they're going to be able to, if they're going to be able to break this barrier, they do have an opportunity to kind of shut this out pretty quickly because they really, they just need four power clams in this game. And I mean, four power clams is a lot when you say it like that, but yeah, from you know, the it, level we've seen, it's uh, just about 44 clams. It's not so bad. It's just the whole smorgasbord. It's just 40 clams. <laughs> Really Not expensive then. dinner out. Yeah. No big deal. I mean, they build pretty quickly, so I think that it's safe to say that the team can get it together. The bubble's coming out. They're right there. Heard a break. Break. Okay, so one in. That does take care of their penalty there. Down to 61. I'm not sure. Arashi does have a few, but Dre is coming in. I think Keen has a few as well. Using that Brella again for some nice coverage. 34. I'm not sure. There's no more there, so... Rashi just waiting. Yeah, he's probably wa waiting for his pick so he can yeah. keep the net open for his team. Very good call. However, not as big of a uh, push as they may have wanted, especially as the time comes down to the last five seconds. Might have been a heartbreaker of a play earlier on, but it's all Demise needed to establish a lead in game two. Exactly. And you hear everyone clapping out here. So great job to Demise for taking that second game. I think that counter pick really worked in their favor. They just had a better idea of how to control the map. Uh, and their players moved around it much better, I feel, than Invertebrates. So now, uh, we had already predicted that Manta Maria should be the pick for game three. I'll be very impressed if it's Piranha Pit, just because it's going to invite itself to um, a lot of Stingray play. Mm -hmm. And given the players that are on board, I feel like that overall game plan might benefit more towards Inver Invertebrates. I agree with you. I think if they do decide to go with Piranha Pit, um, that would benefit Invertebrates quite a lot. So I'm interested to see what map they do decide to pick here because it is their pick for uh, losing that second one. So personally, I'd still go with Manta Maria. I also feel like it would be a lot more of an even-handed battle just because, at least with the general game plan that it seems that Invertebrates is rolling with, Manta Maria is still going to be a fine map for them. They're going to be able to leverage heavily on... Uh, the, the pick-heavy comp they have with Dreyas and Arashi. But also, I feel like that's going to be a moment for Hitzel to really shine. We've seen him hit the back line really hard in these past couple of games. But on a map like Manta Maria, where controlling the high ground is especially powerful for a splat link, this could be his moment to really show that he's looking to take the, the gold Here's here. Here's that push. The double coming in from zero really set it up for them to just literally be able to dominate with those single clams. And that's what Demise did over and over and over again, popping in those single clams one at a time. And it just took forever, unfortunately, for anyone from Invertebrates to break back through. Pro had no clams, so even if he could get closer to the basket, just wasn't able to do it. Just a bit unfortunately. It, it, it just pains you to see the one point sitting there, but it didn't matter in the end just because Demise did such a good job of keeping the battle even-handed after that point. And yeah, we saw a pretty convincing push from Invertebrates, but you're not making that back, especially considering how uncoordinated that push was. Arashi played it out really well for the sake of the rest of his team, but didn't really matter that much if the rest of Invertebrates couldn't rally behind that hold. Yeah, they would have needed to knock it out, so they needed at least two more power clams right there, and they just didn't have the time to bring it all together. So just as we predicted, Manta Maria. So I'm really interested to see what they decide to do in changing their comps. 
I'll be honest, we weapon-wise, I'm expecting a uh, pretty similar layout to game one, but I don't know, it remains to be seen, and with the momentum snatched away from Invertebrates, am I sitting pretty to try and take set one of uh, Grand Finals? For sure. I think that this has been so much fun so far. Definitely two, you know, house favorites coming at it together. Uh, teams that come here time and time again for every Long Island Splat event. So it's really nice to be able to watch them play against each other. You know, just thinking to myself, uh, across all the games that are played here at AM, there's always like the classic sets, like mm -hmm. the people who are always the house defenders, always the ones to you know linger late into bracket and hold it down. And this is becoming an AM classic at this point, the way that these teams constantly able to meet up to each other. Yeah, pickups might change a player here and there, but it's just like the same note of like who consists of these teams. I completely agree. All right, here we go. Let's see how our predictions panned out here. Triple duelies? That's a lot of duelies. That's a lot of duelies. That's a lot of duelies. That's okay. also, it's a little bit end zap, so. He's, I, st he's sticking hard to that support play. Yeah, we'll I guess he wanted works. that armor. That's a lot of duelies. <laughs> I'm really concerned <laughs> right now. Demise did not come to, to play Clan Blitz. They came to make sure that Invertebrates didn't stay alive long enough to play the game. To be honest, if you're not going to play a brush in Clan Blitz, the second fastest weapon that you can pick is Cruise. So if you're going for that speed and you want to be able to just knock it out as fast as you possibly can, this is the pick that you want to go for. So I think right now they're waiting. Can someone jump in? They do get one, two. Can they get their third one Ooh, in? Ooh, a drop from out and deep, into too. Into splash down two, and they get that third one in. So that is absolutely wonderful. A brutal start to game three, as we see. Demise take a very convincing lead. Arashi trying to clean up shop, but Clams are still finding their way in. That net is still open. And it's going to finally close itself out, but that is not the way that Invertebrates wants to start this game. I think that they still have so much time, though, that they are going to be able to kind of get this back if they want. Um, even seeing those clams kind of spawn on the side was a little interesting there. Um, but even still, they have a lot of time. Looks like Gons is just waiting for an opportunity. They're passing each other clams really well, too. So this is something that Demise is really playing to their favor. Their teamwork is so well right now. This is where Invertebrates need to be able to push forward. They have two power clams. I think the other one, they just kind of let go in order to keep their positioning. Solid defensive play is going to allow Invertebrates to try and get their break. However, it's a very convincing push as Keen tries to push himself into the wall, leave himself a little bit of an opening for the rest of his team to jump in there. However, I don't know, little by little, this push is starting to size itself up. Someone else is jumping in. I'm not sure. I mean, they're oh, camping that zone. They that was grim. Yikes. It, it, like, Hitzel strung himself up on that one, jumping in with no cover. Three members of Demise waiting and ready for him. Honestly, it worked for him before, and I think if he could have gotten those two single clams in, it would have been worth it. But just too many members were right there and a little bit too far away from Basket to be able to just throw them in as he land. Now, this is a fairly similar situation to what we saw in game two. However, the point differential much more different. Demise is not sitting with the lone point that they had waiting for the knockout. And with a very similar push from Invertebrates to what we saw in that situation, this is looking like a much more realistic turn back for Invertebrates to att uh, attempt to take the set. Yeah, I think that this is really where they're going to have to um, push forward. I think that first game was kind of like, hey, we're friends, we're having a good time, you know, whatever. And when Demise lost, they were like, oh, no, 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 this is not happening. The, you know, they're, they came to play and they came to win. Even that jump in, I think that the jump, was, they were taken out. So each team is just absolutely ready to go. Yeah, there's a bit of a gruesome retaliation from Invertebrates. That's a waiting using the power climb as bait for the next member to stop up into his little gun to end up catching the end zap fire. Now with the retaliatory push coming in from Invertebrates, just taking a look from the uh, eagle eye view, a lot of this map is covered in pink device. looking like they're sitting in a good position to try and turn this around because they can just reposition themselves for their offensive where they need to if they manage to get a wipe. Absolutely. I think good plan uh, camping that jump point there from the inkjet coming down, but I'm not sure. Henry, oh, Henry takes that Hitzel, but Hitzel goes down to zero. So this is really where that Tentabrella is going to come in. 
Zero has pushed them so far back into their own zone. They do get that power clam in, oh, and they no. do they did they miss? The shot must miss. Okay, they did end up picking it up, and they get that back. All right, Trey's trying to clean up shot before they can get it in. That clam fumbles down. They cannot break past these points. Sometimes that's just the hardest part is that penalty is just so much. So this is a really interesting situation there. They could have left that pity clam and just had a member of the team in waiting for when they were in position to kind of jump in and pick up that clam. Instead, they decide to pick it up and they're going to move forward with all three. So two of them are let go. Oh my gosh. Quick Dreas. pick from Dreas. And now they're sitting with plenty of clams on the board. If they can get the successful push, this could be the moment Invertebrates needs because there's not that much time left on the clock. There's really not. This is like what they need. If they can get both of the power clams that they're holding into the basket, I believe that would give them lead. Although with a pick on Keen, this is a really dangerous situation. Dre's doing what he can to He's juggle these power clams. He can, can only he do so them much. He decides to just go for it, jumping in as far as he can. Not a lot of time left. A second Double jump. jump can, he can he throw it, it in? in? Oh, Nobody misses the gosh. throw in just like that. It's looking overtime. like that's going to be it as Demise tries to secure their first set of grand finals. No one is able to move far enough, and there despawns the last power clam for Invertebrates. So there we go. Getting that first set of clam blitz is Demise. Great job there. They really pulled it all out. It was very impressive play, but Demise was having none of it. They want this win. Now, once again, this is set play. The first set goes in favor of Demise. However, the second set playing itself is going to be splat zones. Game one is going to find itself on Mako Mart, and that could be another opportunity for Invertebrates to try and take this round. We saw how game one was very convincing in favor of Invertebrates. Maybe the same stays for them as we move into the second set of play. Wow. A few of these replays. Are, Rashi can only carry so hard. Like, I'm not going to front. His picks are amazing, but if no one is there to back him up, then those picks don't really mean anything. And even in Clam Blitz, he can kill off as many people as he can, but if he's not able to scrounge up the clams to really make the difference, whether it's scoring them in, keeping the net open, or establishing a power clam of his own, it's like that amount of heavy artillery is not going to have that big of an influence. I agree. I think that was really the the play there that could have worked. If Keen was able to use that defense a little bit more with that Brella, if he were still alive, then Hitzel's jump would have helped a little bit. But they just really didn't have enough power clams even to be able to take care of it. So Zero was cleaning up over here too. Just absolutely everyone going back and forth with these power clams. No one was able to stay up and alive with the power clam for long enough to bring this score down lower than it was. The final push was so like, just disappointing to see. Like, Dreas did such a fine job of being able to, like, set up for his team. But it was so far away from the net that all of that setup couldn't really do much. And then just the icing on the sadness cake was just missing that last uh, opportunity to break the net open. Completely. Sadness. Nonetheless, set two is a fresh start for Invertebrates to be able to... See if they can get the ball rolling, although they're going to have to fight their way all the way through this set and get the next one going. They really do not have wiggle room as far as where to lose. They've got to start it here at Macomart. How's the nose on both sides? Okay. The Nosmos had a really pretty resurgence in being used in the meta recently so we've been seeing it a lot of new places so it's really nice to kind of watch how it's coming out and i'm interested to see what they decide to do with it so splat zones is going to have a very different feel than clan blitz obviously most so, definitely you know we'll just see who decides to do what here it's a lot more confined in its control and because of that it's going to lend itself to a bit more traditional splat play and as far as the way these teams have organized themselves i feel like this is going to be a bit more comfortable uh, grounds for Invertebrates to fight things off, but at the same note, Demise is no slouch when it comes to being able to control zones. Completely. I think that's really what we've been looking for. And right now, it looks like Invertebrates just took back this lead, but so far, I mean, it's still early in, but it's gone back and forth so much. I think that's what we can expect this whole game. It took two specials to knock down Arashi. 
like constant pressure from the ball or end the game shit. Whether it was worth it, it remains to be seen, but I think that just goes to show how confident that Invertebrates is in being able to handle multi uh, opponent situations. I completely agree with you. I think this is really where Invertebrates is like in zone. Their positioning is really good right now. They're trying to push up a little bit, but I think Keen is a little bit far back, you know, using that Explosher, trying to make sure that no one comes around, but jumps back in. Right okay. on the brink of death, too. Nice. All right, try to go in for some repositioning. The back line pretty heavy for uh, Invertebrates, but they need to do something about pressing forward at this rate. Keen's got his bowler ready to go. He just Actually, now that I look at the board, all the members of uh, Invertebrates are ready to pop. We see the ink jets flying, bubblers out. This is the opportunity they need. They just need to pop those bubbles, get the ink down, and control is lost. It's just a moment too late, though, in order for them to keep the lead. So that's really something that they, you know, needed to be in prepared, uh, a little better prepared for Keen going down, too. So that's something that now Invertebrates has to do a lot of work in order to break down their penalty and get this lead back if they want it. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a rough scene. Rise, however, doing a very good job of making sure that Verus doesn't have a lot of room to move. This map is orange. There is a lot of ink down. And even though Invertebrates is able to put out specials that cover the map in a lot of their own ink, it's not in a lot of good positions because if the only place you can move is right into the center lane where there's no cover and it's already an open firefight, you don't want to be in that, uh, that area. For sure. Double bombs trying to get Dreyas out. Not even two bombs can take him out. So unfortunately, he's just going off here. And finally, Invertebrates is beginning to work down on their actual point, not their um, penalty. So this is really where they need to hold zone. That rain coming out is going to cause a little bit of a problem for them, as will the baller. But if Dreyas can get these picks, then maybe that can help them keep zone. They just need to take it back. OK, and they've got it. So now it's just a matter of holding. And given the the time that's on the clock, this is actually a really safe position for Invertebrates because even if they do manage to lose control, look at their penalty points that Demise is sitting on. It's oh going to be rough. So, oh, one point away from All right, that's that just lead. a heartbreaker. Oh, man, these matches so far going to give me anxiety. <laughs> Oh Can't gosh. imagine how the players are feeling after this one as the control of the point slips away from Invertebrates. They have to knock this out. If, Dem if Demise really wants this, they need to grab this now. They're already clocking down into their last 30 penalty points. Very doable for them to shut this out within, the, uh, within time. But once again, we're seeing the total push from Invertebrates. Beautiful penalty put back onto Demise. This is really what Invertebrates needs, you know? The 2v1 situation there. It's, it's just, Dreyas is just getting those picks that they need really, really badly. That inkjet coming up does not get any of the picks with the inkjet that he's looking for. But working on breaking that penalty point down is the goal right now. Ooh. So they do keep it in control and comes down from the jump. A very trade. worthy trade. Beautiful trade. Especially as Invertebrates still sits with control, still chips away at their penalties with 30 seconds left on the clock. It's looking like Invertebrates will be able to clutch this one out. We see the bubbles oh, no, come they need in. To the zone. And they took they the take lead. it again. And just like that, game one going in favor of Invertebrates. Wow. That was a stress inducing game one. However, keep yourselves in your seats because this is history repeating of set one. We already saw how well Invertebrates can control the map at the beginning. But what happens if they lose it? their back control throughout the rest of the set? Yeah, I wonder what kind of is going through their heads a little bit. I always think about the player's state of mind and, you know, what's going through their heads when they win a game. Does that kind of change things for the second game that they have to play? So hopefully everyone can stay calm, have a lot of fun, because that's what this is all about. If you're having fun, in my head, you're already winning. Uh, I'm just saying, at this level of competition, with this level of uh, attention going, it's all about winning right now. <laughs> it's definitely eyes on the prize for all of these players. And you could definitely see that in their play. Like the way this map went back and forth was incredible from both teams. Demise did a really good job of locking down the early game, but at no point did they have total control of the map. They were able to move around better. And even as uh, Invertebrates was able to establish more and more ink on the field, it wasn't as effective as Demise, I feel. 
Meanwhile, once the uh, the specials started to lay out, we saw how well Invertrats was able to organize their pushes. Two ink jets. We saw the bubbles come in as well. Just a total push that was able to force back Demise and continuously get control in favor of Invertebrates. Their timing was so good on that, like you were saying, because every time that Demise was about ready to take zone and knock out, Invertebrates came back and they were able to get that zone in the last second. So that's all they really needed in order to take it. So we'll see how they do on Splatstones on the Reef because that was the loser's pick. So here we go. Now, we saw this very early on in the day. I'm actually rather curious to see how well this is going to uh, pan out. It's looking like very similar weapons across the field, so it's worth noting Keen not opting for the tent at this time. I don't know, I'm curious just to see how the, how the game play, play, plays out, just because it was a very tense ending to... Uh, game one of this set. Yeah, I still have a little bit of anxiety, but Zero getting a couple of picks so far. Absolutely wonderful here. Just waiting for this opportunity to kind of, um, for the rest of the opposing team to come into zone and get those. Decides to pop the inkjet and use this as, for a little bit of an offense to kind of keep invertebrates in their place. So it worked a little bit, a little to his favor, but didn't get any picks there. Yeah, no picks, just more suppression. Which is really not the worst of the place, especially while your team is controlling. However, look at that ink that's on the field, losing control of both the zones, and those things are looking orange. We put some penalty points down on the board for Demise. This is exactly how it went earlier that, you know, Invertebrates needed to kind of get that penalty on Demise in order for them to kind of come back. But because the changes in this map, and it's now a two zone, they need to really pay attention to who has that second zone and how they're able to control it. You know, one big special is not going to be able to do it. Yes. Just looking at the in control now, see things just very evenly cut across the board. Te both teams very aware that they need to keep sure that they have movements to uh, movements outside of their own spawn. If they get locked in spawn, it's over for this map. That's just how the reef has always been. Um, mind you, it's not as snowball-y with this particular yeah. layout, but you definitely don't want to get locked in when you have to worry about trying to control two zones. I think also both of these teams excel at playing enough that they are able to find the different avenues that they need to get out of spawn and that there's a very slight chance they'd be able to be actually locked in. But right now, I mean, Demise is really ticking down this point, showing why they picked this map for their, their loser's pick. So I'm really interested to see what Invertebrates is going to be able to do to come back here and if they are even. I think what's really stuck out for Demise, why this has been such a successful map for them, and why Invertebrates has been playing on the back foot for so long is just Demise is excelling more at a wide range of uh, cover. But they're able to play the map for as wide as it is so effectively, and there's been very little room for Invertebrates to break through. Coming down into the single digits of points to control, and we're finally losing control in just one of the zones. However, both can cap. This could be dangerous for Demise. Definitely can be. I think that this is really where Demise is just saying, nope, we got this. You know, we picked this map, we're going to rock it, and you have no nothing to say about it. Things are looking very familiar to set one of this grand finals. We're reaching into game three, and this is tournament life now for Invertebrates. If they want to try and win this out, they're going to have to take game three. This is going to be a very important counter pick for them. Yeah, absolutely. This is really what Invertebrates needs to you know, think about where do they want to play Splat Zones. We have so many options within this pool as well, so they can choose absolutely anything. But looking at this list, we have Surgeon Shipyard, Anchovy, Gobi Arena, Humpback Pump Track, Imp Block Art Academy, and Muscle Forge Fitness. They're going to go to They're Humpback. They're going to go to Humpback. All right. I was actually just about to, to say how Humpback would probably be one of the better choices, just Me because too. even though we've seen how well Demise can control a wide array of space well, Humpback is a bit more focused. It's just the the center bowl. There's a lot of cover to it. There's a huge amount of space to be able to position for flanking. I think that's where we might see invertebrates uh, win things out. In the individualized uh, fights, at the very least, it's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to see Treyas and Akashi try to go for the picks that has made invertebrates have such a powerful offensive. 
yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens here because this is our game, game six in all, but our third game of the second set. So here we go. All right, taking a quick look just to see the changes that are going to be on board. It looks like a uh, splash medic. Just before we okay. get further into this, I do want to say that this game, Invertebrates needs to win this game to continue Grand Finals. Indeed. Because if Demise wins this, they take the second set, and because it's best of three sets, they've won. So this is actually a, a pretty important game for them to win here. Invertebrates can't really afford to give up any momentum. They need to, not only do they need to win this, this needs to be a confident win. They need to get themselves back in high spirits so they can try to fight this back into the next set, because they're not out of the woods just yet. And g given how well Demise has been able to turn around the initial push from Invertebrates, it is far from a safe victory. I think those missiles were well placed. They just didn't do enough. They still had someone else in the zone there for Demise. But getting control was really important right there. So great job from Invertebrates. This is the opportunity they need. They just need to be able to keep it. They have a three down, four down team wipe on Demise. So this is where Invertebrates really needs to push forward a little bit more and make sure that they can keep this zone. They gotta want it, and they're playing like they really want it. Keegan gonna press forward with the bubbles, and they're finally taking the lead now. They're actually fighting very well across like the entire half of the board that Demise can effectively push against. We see Zero try to push in, let someone jump in, and coming Slash down with the Slash and the ball. Heavy. Oh my gosh, I knew that would take zone. I watched it happen. Oh it takes God. zone, however, it doesn't get any picks. Very good positioning from Key, making sure he has room to let his teammates come in. He's staying alive, giving them the support that they need, and the Explosher doing a world of wonders for being able to pick over those walls. It's forcing a lot of mispositioning from Demise, and the fact that they can't really organize themselves well for a push is keeping them from really doing anything effective in this game. I think so. Oh, they do get zoned, so that's going to put a pretty hefty penalty on the side of Invertebrates. And this is really where Invertebrates needs to be able to come back and get the picks to keep Demise down. Speaking of picks, that was a very important pick for Demise trying to take out Treyas as he sat patiently waiting to punish the inkjet. Being able to keep those heavy hitters off the board from Invertebrates is the only thing that's giving Demise a shred of hope in this. I completely agree. I think right now, you know, Gons is doing a lot to stay in zone. Gonna try to get a couple of picks. Knows that if they can get Dreyas, they're in a good position, and they do. They're taking down the points on their penalty too, and it's really not that big of a difference between 64 and 42. Yes, despite how well Invertebrates had that uh, zone when it was in their control, this is a very even-handed fight from both sides. Yeah, this is where Keen really needs to come in with these bubbles, doing the work, pop the bubbles right before they get the lead. Do they get it? They took the lead. They take the lead and the bubbles get diminished very quickly. An unfortunate use of special. However, Dreyas, not out of it just yet, goes for a pick, gets picked out early on. This is a bloody battle for this game three. Oh yeah, this is exactly the type of game three you know both teams want it. They are not gonna let it go. Arashi getting a nice pick there, trying to stay alive, unfortunately doesn't do it. And the zone is still ticking down. They're almost done with their penalty on the side of Invertebrates. So this can be really close because 36 to 28, not a big difference here. And given the seconds that are go. on board, this is going to be a very unsteady lead. lead, but they have it nonetheless. Treyas trying to stay in the back lines. He's going to go for the trade, only gone staying alive. And these points are clocking down even further. They're going to get into the single digits with no contention. There's just no organization behind Demise to be able to take this back. Gons they go for the splash, and they, they lose look. control on the one point. Can they go for this cap? It's going more and more green. Picks oh left and right, gosh. and control is going to go in favor of Demise. Wow. I'm that literally is, standing on my seat. This is a <laughs> heartbreaker. This could be the moment that spells it for Invertebrates. 51 points. They need to make sure they can't go for the closeout at this point. They just need to get control away from Demise. Yeah, they really do. I mean, Demise has that zone so strong, but the bubble's coming out. The inkjet from Dreyas. That was Dreyas not a good push forward from Dreyas. He had no cover and no support. Brought himself right into enemy fire. They're going to stay in control. However, control is going back and forth. The Explosh Recover from Keen is doing a huge amount of work for keeping this an uncontrolled area. They just need to get Henry out of mid, and they should be able to take zone, because really that's He's going to do it himself. There we go. That was a very questionable inkjet from Henry, because it moved himself out of control. Oh. But a double pick on Andreas is going to let him go back for it. 
Oh man, this just keeps going back and forth. That Explosher doing a lot of work from Keen. It looks like this could be it. I mean, we are so close to time here. Less than 10 seconds left, and here we go. This Zero's going to get popped off, and just like that, coming in into the last five seconds, Invertebrates they needs lost to control. hold control. They lost control, and just oh, like man. that, set two is going to go in favor of Invertebrates. We're going into set three, folks. Oh, yes. That was wonderful. Absolutely the type of gameplay we want to see. You and I both standing up like, oh my gosh, what's about to happen here? It is very dangerous to stand on these stools, by the way. Oh, really? Please don't let me fall. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, my gosh. My heart is racing, too. I can't believe that set. Absolutely wonderful play. You've you know. seen six games with this grand finals, and we're not even close to done yet. As we begin Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard for the final set of grand finals for LAS4. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to be just so good. I am so hyped for this and so excited. Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard. We saw it already today, and we're going to see it again. But watching these two teams play is going to be just absolutely beautiful. So let's look at some of these replays, though. Definitely the going back and forth. You know, this... These Splat Zones matches have been absolutely amazing. But coming in here, this was really the beginning of it all when Invertebrates was able to take the zone and break down this point so that they had the lead. You know, throughout the tournament today and throughout especially those grand finals, we've seen a lot of the, the heavy load being carried by Drea's and Akashi. But I feel like this game, Keen was the MVP. There was never an end to the Explosher rain down on Demise. At no point were they safe, either from the bubbles drawing their attention, the bubbles blocking fire, or just the fact that they had to worry about the Explosher firing around every which way of defense that they had. Demise was at no point comfortable throughout this entire game, and that's what we needed to see from Invertebrates exactly what they need. They knew they needed to step up and they did. They took that game and it was absolutely wonderful and it just goes to show how much more amazing Splatoon we still have to come because we could see a total of three more games. I am always a fan of going to the last game in a set. Me too. And going into a game nine would be something else. I don't think we've yet to see on a... Uh, yes, this will actually be the first time in the history of set play that we could potentially see a match go into final game. I'm always rooting for it, but now we have a <laughs> legitimate chance of it happening. I think the closest we ever got was a, uh, a game eight for a beacon, I believe. Yeah, I got a thumbs up on that. A game eight at beacon was the closest we've gotten to date, uh, on and off stream, mind you. So, like, we're watching history here, folks. Oh, yeah. And if there's any way to really prove that both of these teams really want this win, this is the best way for both of them to show it. It's been a phenomenal play on both ends, but we're not out of the woods just yet. Uh, it looks like everyone is readying up now. Uh, it's just Invertebrates, the last one's too ready. As we get ourselves into Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard, just to give a quick look into the future for what we can potentially see. Makomar, Gobi Arena, and Inkblot are the options for Rainmaker. And I believe we've now seen all of these maps played for Rainmaker today. We have. We definitely have. So I'm really excited to see how they how these teams play them because we didn't see them played by all of these teams. So every time you have a map played by someone else, someone else has a different strategy. So I am so excited to see how it goes. And I honestly can't tell you what we could be seeing for games two or potentially game three of the current set, just because we've seen how fluid Demise can be as a team as far as like where they're going to position themselves, how they're going to take control, how they're going to maintain that control. But we have seen how Invertebrates is laying themselves out and how well their general game plan is adapting to each of the situations. Like, as far as, like, who's doing what, no, nothing's really changed. Hitzel and Keen are still laying down the support for Akashi and for Drea's. But how well is that going to work forward in the, the hypermobile game mode that is Rainmaker? For sure. Everyone getting hyped over on main stage there, trying to warm up their fingers, getting ready to go into our final set. Best of three right here, and we're starting with Rainmaker on Surgeon Shipyard. All right, let's get ourselves a look at the, uh, the weapons that are at hand. Uh, good amount of duelies once again, seeing how they've been doing such a good job of covering fire for old teams and immediately breaking out into heavy amounts of fire. It's going to be an initial break, break from Purple Ink, but 
No one grabbing that right away. There's no way they would want to grab the Rainmaker with such uncertainty as to where they're going to move it. However, it's looking like Demise is going to be able to uh, press it forward a little bit more, especially as they position themselves for the first grab. Yep, the moment that armor came out and Henry had it, I saw that he was going for it. Unfortunately, does not survive the Stingray. Exactly what you want to see on Surgeon Shipyard. The booty is coming out. I love it. And just, you know, waiting for this opportunity because the Rainmaker is now in a pretty The Rainmaker is pulling at the top of the map. Like, no one wants to grab that. Look at that. That's awful. And if that that kind of dock um, starts to fall down, where does the Rainmaker go? I think it just <laughs> follows it. It's, it, it's definitely a strange place for it to sit. Nonetheless, Demise grabs it again. They try to run off with it. But once again, Keen going for the snipes with the Stingray. He does not want that thing moving. At least if it's not in the hands of someone for invertebrates. Yeah, I think that's really going to be the thing there. Keen picks up the Rainmaker, decides to push forward, goes under the bridge, above the bridge, sorry, to kind of push into this. And Arashi on the side here does get a couple picks or one pick and an assist. And it's really going to help move this Rainmaker up. They're deciding to go straight up the middle. Okay, they did take the lead. Very nice job there. And, you know, Demise is right there ready to stop that push. Treyos once again picking apart the back line of the enemy team. But I feel like that's going to be even more important to witness in this game. Just because there's a lot of room to cover. Treyos has his work cut out for him if he's going to be attempting to pick apart Demise's defenses. Yeah, I think Dreyas is just really at this point going to be waiting. You know, did pop armor and decide to pop that inkjet and coming up, trying to use it for a little bit of coverage here to make the route pretty clear for someone to move that Rainmaker, but fortunately Oof. does go down to the blaster. He's looking pretty confident uh, as both teams fight it forward. I feel like Demise is sitting with better momentum, but the uh, points say otherwise. Yeah, I think this is really where Demise just wants to be in a good position where they feel comfortable. And right now, they just don't feel comfortable with it. But I think they're going to try to take out Dreyas before they begin any sort of push. They know he's up there, and they're just waiting for an opportunity. They do get him taken out. So someone else jumps in, though. And I'm not sure if Arashi is going to be able to um, do anything there. Zero going after him decides to back off. And now it's just a waiting game. I feel one of the best things that Arashi's been able to do in this particular team composition is how he's able to peel pressure away from the rest of the team, whether or not he's just giving cover to Treyas or if he's just acting as a distraction. He's done an excellent job of being the focus of Demise's attention time and time again. And given the tension that's in this Grand Finals, Demise cannot afford to look at someone who's just acting as a distraction. I completely agree. Arashi plays some really, really good um, Toxic Mist there, too, because that's going to hinder the opportunity for you to make that jump across that big gap with the Rainmaker. So very smart thinking there. I think that's what did stop Demise from getting across here. And this is an opportunity that Invertebrates needs to get the Rainmaker, let it reset, and just kind of push it forward. They're sitting very close to the Rainmaker. Even if they did grab it, it was just a good idea just for holding it defensively. They're going to let it fall practically at the midpoint. Yeah, it's really just Hitzel staying alive. Gets one, unfortunately does go down, so not able to get another pick. But Zero brings out that inkjet that's going to offer some cover from above. They do pick up the Rainmaker. They make the jump, and they take the lead. So this is really, this is all about it. This, this is, is it. dangerous with only less than a minute left on the clock. And Vertorets has their hand forced. They need to act fast if they're going to try to take this. Keen gets the pop, and he starts to move the Rainmaker. However, there's not a lot of ink pressed forward for him. And no one has dove deep for the team. Dreyas having to fall back thanks to the pressure forced from center stage. This is going to be a dangerous one if Invertebrates trying to go for the uh, lead. They have to reposition themselves, and Zero is in fine position to be able to continuously force where Keen can move. Yeah, I thought that Zero would be able to come up on the side of Keen. Unfortunately, he doesn't do it, but someone else on the team is able to do it. Rainmaker is still in a rough spot for Invertebrates because they can just push it right up that sponge if they're able to do it. So really, they're getting a couple of nice picks that they need to continue to push this out, push it all the way to 20. This is really rough, especially with the last five seconds coming down. And Vertebrax is going to be able to grab it if they want. However, Zero hovering over it with the Ancient. He's going to get popped, and now here we are. We're sitting with a position where Vertebrax just needs to run it to the 19-point uh, marker. But that in itself is quite the feat, given how well defense we've seen Demise play this map. And 
with not that much time left on the uh, overtime. Grace. This is going to be a very important defense for Demise. They oh, really cannot yeah. afford for Invertorat to press this forward, especially as Dreyas is the one holding the uh, the Rainmaker. We've seen how well focused he is with his picks. Oh my gosh, Dreyas is going up the sponge, and if he can get a couple... Oh. No, he's going to get picked from out deep, and just like that game one is going to go in favor of Demise. I, I really thought he had that for a second. I was like waiting for it, but that jump off to the side when he missed the jump on the end and then had to wait for the sponge to reset so he could get up higher, just didn't work. There's really good focus in, from Demise knowing who they needed to take out. They knew they just needed to stop the Rainmaker. There was nothing else they needed to do, nothing fancy. And I feel like that was just the same like beat that they were going for this entire game one just lock down the objective. They didn't need to do anything too fancy. They didn't need to maintain in control. They just kept on fighting over and over and over again. Once they had a comfortable lead, they were set. Completely. Absolutely what you want to see within this game. So it's been so much fun so far to watch these two teams play against each other. And it just shows how well evenly they're matched. You know, Dreyas coming around and really finding a way to get continuous pick after pick, working on making sure Zero was doing a lot of work here today too in this game, making sure that he was able to get a lot of really nice picks, so everyone's just playing really well so far. Yes, however, this is now the Jaws of Defeat that we have to see Invertebrates climb out of. They are forced to win these next two games in a row if they're looking to win. Otherwise, Demise, they just need to take out one game. Yeah. This is it. This is the end of Grand Finals, effectively. This could, I mean, this is our game eight. So this will determine whether we get to see game nine or not, whether your wish comes true. I'm always rooting for, for an end of set game, especially as this would be a, a, a historic one. But this is a very important counter pick for Invertebrates. Right there. That was, unfortunately, that was the problem. It's so hard to, to make that jump when you have people pressuring you from the other side. And your teammates is there, but they just can't get enough. So... Uh, let's see what we have the counter pick. It's going to be Mac Omar. Yes. This has been a consistent field of uh, battle for us throughout the day. It's a really good Rainmaker map. I feel like it's a lot of fun to play. Um, the pushes are there. You just need to be able to set up. It's big enough. It doesn't feel too small. It doesn't feel too big. It's just a really good map for a lot of the modes. It's just a good map. Rainmaker. It's a great map. Pressure's on for Invertebrates, though. This is going to be a very impressive feat for them to pull off, bring us into the game nine. Like, we, we've seen that they're capable of it, but on this map in particular, I'm not too sure. The last time we saw them play on uh, on Macomart, if I remember correctly, they had faltered, but let's see how things work out for them. Everyone's readying up, everyone's loading in, and it's time to go. This is game eight. Potentially the last game of Long Island Splat 4. I think Invertebrates can do it. They just have to pull together. They have to stay strong and, you know, maintain what they've been doing all along, play some really great Splatoon. All right, let's get a look at these loadouts real quick. Pretty par the course for what we've seen the rest of the tournament. However, it's worth noting that Demise only rolling with a one Dooley's this time. A lot of ink coverage potential mm. and very aggressive start Triple. from Demise. Zero rolling in, making sure that this is a defiant lead. Oh, man. Oh, he's coming for the full one. Out, that was a delayed quad right there. Exactly what we want to see. That Explosher getting a double from that one shot from Keen. Great job there. They're just saying, no way. There's no way we're letting you knock this out this early. We're 30 seconds into this match, and the pressure's already on. This is going to be a, a true grand finale. This is exactly what you like to see in this type of tournament. Each team just really doing their best to make sure that they're able to, you know, put on their best show and be proud of how they played. And I think no matter what happens in this game, both teams can be really proud of how they played. Absolutely. However, as things clock in for themselves, and Fred just so close to being able to break through that point lead, and they're not completely out of the uh, the, uh, the running just yet. That's a really good spot for the Rainmaker to sit in. It's fairly neutral ground. If they manage to get a triple or a full wipe, this could be the push the they bubbles, need, the especially with those out. bubbles. They However, God's taking the... Uh, the Rainmaker is really good for Demise. They're going to get themselves in decent positionings. The pop of the bubble is going to pick off Arashi. That's 
exactly what they need. They just, they don't have map control right now in mid, so that's gonna slow them up a little bit because they really need to do that in order for them to move with the Rainmaker. But finally, it looks like they are gonna move forward and they're going up that left-hand side. I'm not quite sure. It looks like Zero's trying to pave the way. They're trying to decide which direction they want to go. And they do decide to go up the left. All right, so Gulgan's coming in there and just waiting for the rest of the team to really be there to support him. Is facing Keen on that Explosher. And I believe that's going to be three down on the side of Demise. Yeah, not a very convincing push. It only built up their lead by two points. However, that could be all they need at this, at this mark of the game. Coming down into the last three minutes. So there's still plenty of time for Invertebrates to turn this back. Keen now sitting with the Rainmaker. I actually think he's probably the best pick for Invertebrates to hold the Rainmaker just because g given the arc and power of the, uh, the Rainmaker, it's very similar to the type of uh, support that we've seen Keen offering with uh, the Explosher. He's going to opt to jump off so he can reset the Rainmaker. I think does a really good job as far as like drawing attention to the sides, pull people off. However, Demise is going to once again get the pick. They're going to get control. And given how the ink on the field sits for Demise's at half, they're sitting very comfortable, defensively speaking. Yeah, I think Demise just didn't really have enough players on the field to be able to make that Rainmaker push once it reset. So this is where they're just going to wait for an opportunity to push forward. Gons is shouting this way, going to pop ball, use it for some defense. Unfortunately, decides to go backwards when their Rainmaker carrier did not was not able to continue. Does survive the Explosher and manages to pop the Rainmaker shield once again. Whether or not they can escape from Keen. There we go. I'm sitting a little bit worried here for Invertebrates. As we come into the latter half of this game, they look very unorganized. It's a lot of Keen trying to push forward by himself. I haven't been able to see Arashi or... Um, has really put up as much of an influence onto this match as we've seen previously. However, it's all getting his time to shine. He's going to use the suction bomb rush, see what they can do with that kind of pressure as they get a lone pick out of it. Insel trying to lead the press onwards, get the pick on Henry. He's going to manage it. Meanwhile, the rest of his team trying to peel towards the left. They're in a position to get themselves a lead. They just need to press they point that the and they get the lead. And then just they lose barely, it though. Oh my gosh. Instant team wipe. However, that's 60 seconds on the clock. They need to hold that lead. They're not going to really be able to press that any further, I would feel, given how Demise is pressing this forward. And they have plenty of control. Pushback very deeply from zero. However, Invertebrates coming through. This is looking really good for them right now. 45 seconds left on the clock. Even with Gons right there, they just had too many people right waiting for them to push forward that they weren't able to push the Rainmaker much further than that. I think this is an opportunity that Invertebrates has. They can just hold it there. If they want to, they have less than 30 seconds left now. And really, they just need to make sure that that Rainmaker doesn't go any further. So here we go. Rainmaker is resetting. This is an opportunity. If Demise wants to win this, they need to pick it up and push as far as they can. Trying to break through the back line is zero. However, he's not able to get this pick on Treyas. Really dangerous play as the last 10 seconds clock in. Don sitting on the Rainmaker, who's waiting for his opportunity to grab, but he has no opening. All the avenues of their approaches are yellow right now. They're going to have to bring this into overtime and trying to bring it through that corridor on the right. A really dangerous call as all of that firepower is funneled onto them. This was it. I mean, right now... And he retreated too much. Now the clock going to be pressed even further. The in gun is to his head. If Demise wants to win. They need to make this push now. Invertebrates don't have any specials they can use <gasps> and he right misses now. The jump. Missiles... Oh, missiles coming out, and that is it. Invertebrates winning the second game, going to bring us to a game nine, game three of the set. If you're watching from this point on, you're watching GSM history in the making as we see game nine, the end of grand finals, no matter who takes it at this point. The map selection choice is Gobi Arena or Inkblot Art Academy. I feel polar opposites as far as stages go. We have a yeah. map that's incredibly well constrained, leads, lends itself very well to organized team play, is not very welcoming to flanks, that being Gobi Arena. Meanwhile, Inkblot has, for the most part, one avenue of you bringing up the, uh, the Rainmaker. You only have one opportunity, really. Mind you, once you get past that, your options flourish. But that left-hand side of the map to defend is so difficult because it's invited to, from such an open area. No matter what, this is not going to be an easy choice for Demise. 
And we get the call from Future. It's going to be run back to Inkblot Art Academy. Oh, man. This is dangerous callings. I feel like this is a map that favors Demise very well. This is an excellent pick for them. And more so the fact that it's going to hurt Invertebrates and their composition. Like, we saw that even though uh, Trias was able to carry pretty heavily throughout this game, uh, this tournament, rather, like, it's not a very welcoming map to uh, to his style of carry. Oh, man. I have a lot of anxiety right now. <laughs> <laughs> you have every right to. I Us, mean, the players, the audience, this is a very tense finale to this tournament. Oh, man, this is absolutely wonderful to watch, too. So I am so, so excited to see this come together here. I think this was the downfall right there. Gons just got caught in those missiles and could not get out. His movement, I, I feel like the pressure really got to him because his movement was very spotty in that moment. We saw him miss his jump. He didn't reposition himself from the box as well. And then once those markers came down, it was curtains. Mm -hmm. It was an a very clutch defense from Invertebrates. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful gameplay, though. And you could see ev all players are just in their focus mode. They're waiting. This is going to be it. The opportunity that they want to really, to really shine. And I'm super, super excited to watch this. There was yep. a pack of gum on the, uh, the side of Invertebrates at the beginning of the set. And I just see everyone chewing, and that pack <laughs> is gone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like pressure's on across the board for all these players now. Oh, completely. Everyone's just waiting <laughs> to see. These boys munching doing. away. <laughs> all right. We're getting into game nine. It's time. Here we go. Rainmaker on Inkblot Art Academy. This is your grand finale to Long Island Splat 4. Invertebrates versus Demise. Final loadouts give us, once again, a very similar loadout for Demise. And Invertebrates bring back double duelies. See how the break goes for them. I just don't even know how to feel. Part of me <laughs> is like, I just wish I could watch. Oh my gosh. It's so stressful, but we see everyone fall in line to their typical roles. Keen, once again, heavy backlining, heavy support. However, he is going to get picked off from Zero. Zero starting to mirror Treyas and how their approach to these team cops has been. Zero's been playing hyper aggro, breaking in, getting the picks, keeping Invertebrates from making their plays because you can't make plays if all your teammates are dead. Exactly. I think really this is the opportunity that they needed. Those missiles coming out too are going to cause a little bit of support. Team pushing through the Rainmaker. If they can get that pick on Henry, which they did, this is the opportunity they have to move forward. They're bouncing around, trying to get past Little Goms. Not sure if they're going to be able to. Oh, he's going to be able do. to break through. And that's a 29 point lead. Beautiful. So early on in the set, we still have four minutes left to go. Absolutely wonderful lead there. Honestly, it doesn't seem like much, especially on this map. Arashi is on, big but... chilling in enemy lines right now. He's going to get one pick, going to peel away. We got someone jumping on him. That Rainmaker's already broken down. So much focus on him. So close there from just picking it up. Absolutely wonderful play there. Ink just gonna come out and offer support from above as some of Demise waits to set up. I think they're looking to get a pick or two before they begin to move this Rainmaker, even though they do have control of mid, even with all the bubbles and everything. Yeah, the control of mid is not gonna help them as much on this map just because it's so open-ended. Control is gonna fall so heavily. If they can't ink forward past these walls, it's not gonna matter as much. However, very impressive pick through those bubbles. It's going to allow Demise a little bit less pressure and see if they can force themselves up. The baller's going to pave the way. Oh, and Gons is going right for the back line. He's not going to get any picks from it. However, Demai's sitting pretty comfortably with a uh, Rainmaker as they try to move themselves upwards. He's not having any of it, though. No way. Keen is, is ready to fight, and he's right there, and he does get a really nice pick off of the Rainmaker carrier and Gons. But unfortunately, he just goes down to zero. So this is really the opportunity that they need. Zero's got to get away from those missiles. Not going to do it. Blood is, is into the wipe. air as That's Invertebrates comes wipe. for them. They're not even going to bother with grabbing it. Keen's going to fall to the back. He's going to keep on operating the back line as he has been. But every other member of Invertebrates with blood in the air is ready to just come after them. Oh, man. Keen still pushing forward, looking to work on that point lead. Gets it just below the 29. Dreyas is right there with that inkjet, though. Gets another pick before the inkjet ends. Bounces back. Really nice spot to land. Unfortunately, gets taken out by the other inkjet. They're still... They managed to forward. move their lead up just a little bit more, and the 
Rainmaker is in a horrible position for Demise right now. They need to have that reset. A little bit less than two minutes left on the clock, and Vernimus is playing beautifully right now. Demise has not found a proper position for themselves to press forward into enemy territory. Rainmaker resets, just as he said it needed to happen. Zero's going to go for the pop, and no one's going to grab it. They call so they can try and get ink forward. However, it's not looking like purple's in the right spots for them right now. Yeah, I think they just really don't have enough ink. Even those bubbles coming out is going to make it really difficult. Nice pick off Keen from Zero there. Exactly. Ooh, what they deep get pick on Hitzel. And he's not going to get the pick on Arashi. However, that's this two is down. Henry this just needs to move forward a little bit. And they're going to lose it just like that. Zero in the back line is going to get cleaned up by Arashi. And the Rainmaker sitting back in green control with just a little bit over a minute left on the clock. This is exactly the type of play we're looking for here. Using that Rainmaker to Look kind of hold it off to the side. Yeah, they're just holding. They just need to hold. I mean, a minute is a long time to hold, but this lead is really nice for what they have so far. If they can kind of push forward a little bit more, they just, the only thing they would want besides this is a knockout. And really, that Rainmaker couldn't have been in a worse position for Demise so deep off to the sides. We never really get a chance to see these flanks played so openly for Rainmaker just because it's so aggressively out of the way. There's no reason for them to get played out, but in a way for holding the Rainmaker itself, a beautiful play from Inferno Brass. Yeah, exactly. Trace coming out with that inkjet. Gonna try to get a few picks. Gets one. Uh, Not able to weave through them and get the pick on Gons, but look how far back Gons is forced. Yeah, holding on to that too. Oh, Andreas is going to sweep it up. He's going to get Henry. No. No. All right, so this is an opportunity. Henry's right in front, right there, trying to help Gons push that Rainmaker forward. Not much time left. This is Demise's last stand with five seconds left on the clock. Can they press forward? They need to get the pop. Henry's going to grab it, and they lose it. And just like that, Invertebrates is going to take Long Island Splat 4. Look at Hitzel. Hitzel so finally got his win. <laughs> he finally got his win. Absolutely wonderful games. Demise played absolutely so well, though. You really have to hand it to them. They were not ready to lay down and quit. They were just going for it over and over and over and over again. Look so, at these boys popping off. They're feeling it. They totally are. Absolutely wonderful time. Everyone going over to congratulate each other because everyone at the end of the day is great friends. And this was just played so, so well. Although you can't help but sense the defeat in the air from Demise. They played it well, but that's curtains. Yeah, I think that at the end of the day, they just really need to be very proud with how well they played. You know, Absolutely. They put up such a good fight each time, and that's something to be said. Because it, when it gets in your head sometimes, and you know, especially you, they can hear us too, so listening to what we're saying as well, it just kind of gets under your skin maybe a little bit. So uh, they played so well. They have nothing to be disappointed about. Today. Hey, listen, they, both of these teams had high expectations coming into this grand finals, and they met it perfectly. Demise playing as well as you would expect of a sponsored team, and... Even though Invertebrates comprised of a pickup, these are all incredibly talented players. They all know what it takes to compose a really strong team. They all know what it takes to win. Finally able to show that they can. For sure. Just getting a look over some of these plays, and it's just excellent plays from both sides. We see how accurate both teams are able to fire, how they're able to weave through bubble support from both sides. Like how smart of picks we were able to see the cameras focus on Keen. And Keen made a lot of really strong plays throughout this entire grand finals. He was backlining perfectly, giving the right types of situations for the rest of his team to follow up. And even at that, Keen himself left himself as really good bait because we constantly saw Zero focusing in on him. Mm -hmm. Halfway through this game nine, we saw the focus was there. We knew that this was happening. Dreyas was able to focus out all of these players because they knew where they wanted to fire. Their attention wasn't drawn to Dreyas. They forgot that he was haunting them in the night the way that he was. For sure. They... It just, I think every single player had their role. They played it really well. They knew what they were doing. And shot after shot after shot, every time they got a pick, they were really happy with it. So just superb level of play for Splatoon today. And we got our game nine, just like we were hoping. Finally did it. Very happy with our play. And I know we'll be able to get a word from a few of these players uh, as we move forward. Uh, we're going to be doing a few interviews just because, like, there's a good reason to hear from all of these players. We'll see who we can pull out. I know uh, DJ's trying to grab someone. T-Mag's already set ourselves up. 
Yeah, I think we're looking to get Hitzel out here. You know, talk to if him. If there's about. anyone in this room that want to get the opinion on that grand finals, I'm pretty sure he's the man. Oh, yeah. I want to hear what he has to say about that because I know that he has been waiting and waiting and waiting to get one of these wins for a while. So, and what a win to get it. Game nine. We went to game nine. This is a long one. Hi, how's it going? Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, shaking a little bit. Hello. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so happy to finally get a land win because last time it was like this close. Oh, I got to slide in. How you doing? Good. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just happy to finally get a land win cuz last time was so close and like we had like technical issues cuz Arashi popped off and hit the table and knocked the switch I'm out sorry, of the dock. Sorry, that was my dock. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, woo, and it was just I really was hungry for it this time and it showed. Yeah. We planned a little bit like we looked at the weapons that we had cuz we were thinking like okay, we need a stingray, right? And we had situations where Keen would go like machine or like I would go custom jet and I played custom jet through most of the tournament but um we had like a backup comp in case like our side picks didn't work which is just the two bomb range burst bombs and the exolasher mm -hmm. and then Dreyas on the on the dualies because we know that like the guys were playing they have like really high individual skill like I don't know how many times I showed up on stream but like Henry was like destroying us like he was oh, getting yeah. directs that he shouldn't have gotten and, and it was really hard and we were just okay look if they're gonna have like better individual skill than us and like we want to focus on teamwork let's just go like a bunch of just AOE long range and like every single time someone gets picked off we just like mortar them and it was working like uh, <laughs> it was like awesome like there were so many times where like someone would get a call out and i'd throw a bomb hear a tick and then the guy would die and whew, it, it, it was rough <laughs> now was there a designated <laughs> shot caller for your team because it is worth noting uh, we brought this up a few times you guys had a pickup for this event yeah well um the we i've teamed with rashi a bunch of times I play with Keen and Andreas. Well, usually I'd scrim against them, but uh, Long Island Splat 3, it was the same comp, but it was Keen swapped out for Prodigy because we kind of did like a clockwork um, deep blues kind of thing. Right, right. Um, so it's not like we're familiar with playing with each other, but um, it, no, it, for the most part, um, the, the plan was for uh, Keen and I to do like shot calls and kind of kind of pay more attention and it was up to like Arashi and uh, Dreyas to, to kind of go in and slay. But I mean, the way it always works out, it's like they were making calls, we were getting picks and sharking. Like, it, like once the game starts, you have to do what the game tells you of to course. do and not what you plan ahead of time. But you no, know, the general game plan was Keen and I were kind of like the, you know, the, not back line, but Keen and, I, Keen and I were, you know, trying to pay more attention and then Arashi and Dreyas were trying to make sure they got the kills and it worked out. It right. worked out really well for you guys. <laughs> Great job. And going to game nine. So, yeah. you know, that was like a huge deal, too, because we're up here. I'm literally standing on the edge of my seat, <laughs> like waiting for this opportunity because I know how badly you wanted this. I know. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been a little bit less active with Splat lately as well. So And, and I've just been kind of like looking for to just kind of get back in, in the tournaments. Like, clock oh, this is one way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. So it feels really nice to just like win. That always happens. Like whenever I don't play for a while, I come back and I just win a tournament first. <laughs> first good. come back so yeah <laughs> i'm back it's that refresher you know mm -hmm. you have like a better attitude to come back yeah. to it too so it's mm -hmm. definitely worth it yep and we were saying this earlier how this is the first time that we've seen a, uh, a set play match go to its final game yeah we were close last time but there was like there was like so i think there was a 2-0 and game eight yeah yeah I went yeah, to yeah, a yeah. Game eight last mm -hmm. time yeah so. We had to replay, so I guess it was technically nine games, but yeah. I mean, I knew that it was going to be close. I was I was a little bit nervous going into it because I know, like, again, like, I haven't been playing as much, and you, these, you know, these guys, it's like Demise, like, like back to, like, Quantum, they play with each other a lot. So yeah, we knew sure. that they were going to be a really strong team and that last time was, like, really close, and, uh, you know, you, you kind of think, like, all right, well, how are we going to have to deal with them you know, kind of just being more on the ball, like kind of like better players, I guess. And mm -hmm. uh, I kind of already touched on that. We just went a comp that kind of n took aim and movement and kind of like technical skill a little bit out of the equation so we could kind of For play sure. to our strengths. But, you know, I, w I was a little bit worried that it's like, okay, I hope we don't get bopped this time. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played lately, but no, we just, it, it just all kind of came back to us and we all like listened to shot calls. There was never any salt. We were just completely focused on, on the goal. Bad things happened. It didn't bother us. You know, we weren't like, you know, a game wouldn't end and we weren't like, oh, we should have done this, we should have done that, and start talking about it. Like, we would, we would maybe, like, kind of mention something. That, okay, cool, next game. And it just, you know, you just play well and you stay focused, you stay persistent, the, the wins kind of come to you. You brush it off. Yeah. Now, would you mind sharing what it's like to maintain that focus for nine games like this? Because this was not a short set by any means. Yeah, it's fun. I, um... Some tournaments I can get like a little bit fatigued, which sucks, but this wasn't really a long one. And I, honestly, like it's kind of like um, 
almost like a rush or a high. Like once you're in that, once you're in the right mentality and you're you're just awake and you're focused and like your brain is completely committed to to like winning the game. It just I feel I don't know. It just it's like kind of like a high, I guess. I don't know. It's, All right. It's, it's really I like it. So. All right. Of course, it makes sense. And especially you brought us to this point every so often, like looking at, I think it was game two of the third set that we were just like, oh, my gosh, if they lose this of the second set, game two, mm -hmm. if they lose this, it's over. Yeah. And right away, like I could feel the tension and we were talking about it. And I'm just like, OK, what's what's going on in their heads? What was going yeah, on in your heads? That was the um, that was that the was the reef on uh, Splat Zones. That was your Wait, the reef was the first one we lost. And then it was. It's all a blur already. No, Humpback, <laughs> Humpback was the crazy one, right? Humpback was the one that... That, that was the one where Keen with the Explosion just yeah. held sure. down the fort the entire yeah. game. Yeah, like, like we made like a big mistake because um, like this is something that we, I've kind of talked about with Soldier a lot. When you're in these situations where the other team just has to come rush the zone and they're going to use their specials and they're going to focus on zone, like in those situations, the team that's trying to cap the zone is at a disadvantage, and we kind of made the mistake of like trying to paint zone, and that's what got us wiped there. Like What we should have done was like just let them take zone, get a few picks, wipe them, and now we have specials, and they're they're basically gonna lose from there. You know, mm -hmm. you just it it's not like a guaranteed knockout. It was a little bit questionable because it was like one point left, so we we could have got it there. Right. But um, we like we we recognized that immediately and just started thinking, okay, cool. Now we're gonna have to do this. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to like get specials and stuff. And the, it was just like there was never any kind of like distraction, I guess. So mm -hmm. there, I, I guess there wasn't anything special going on because. You know, we were just kind of focused on making sure that we that we did the right thing every step of the way the whole time, and just because that was bad, it, I guess it, it didn't didn't really. Yeah, make a I difference. guess because like we're looking at it on the other side. So the moment that you see, okay, well they have the first set, you know, you're going for the second set, and then if they won this, that would have been it. Mm -hmm. But bringing it into the Rainmaker set gave you a whole another option for you just to be able to come back and close this out. So mm -hmm. definitely to me and to, to Hangman, we feel the pressure a little yeah. bit more maybe than you guys. Yeah, I mean, I've been there before. I've had, you know, I've had, torn like, not, not, not only grand finals that go, you know, you do, like, reverse sweeps, but the especially in, like, the bigger, like, tournaments where, like, even if it's not grand finals, the team that you're fighting is a big deal. And, like, you, we've had those situations where it's just you kind of go into Zen mode and get a reverse sweep without even realizing that the set's over and mm -hmm. then it's like awesome. But yeah, th 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 that's kind of how it felt like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience while you're here? Uh, yeah, I guess um, I just kind of want to, I'm just kind of glad that I got to show off like Neo splash matic because I, I really like the weapon. Like, uh, I don't think you guys know too much about like early splat one, but I used to play the vanilla splatter shot in, in that, which was like bomb range, burst bomb, and, bo and burst bomb rush. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like got known originally for, for being like the only person that did that. And Neo splash is kind of similar in a lot of ways. So like I really, like, it just, it's, it's really fun. But I found uh, a lot of good ways to use it. The, the weapon has no jump RNG at all. So, um, and then you run like Ninja Squid and you have like this really tricky movement where you can kind of hop back and forth. Like there was a bunch of times where like I'm fighting like an Empire or something like that. And if you just make sure that you hop to the side as his roll ends, you're going to move and he's not while you're shooting. And you actually, it's like weird because people look at the gun and think, oh, it's a support weapon. It, you know, it's not going to be as good as getting kills as like a 10 attack or Empire. But if you play it right, if you kind of like put a lot of time into mastering it, I think it's actually like a really strong uh, slayer, and I think a, a lot of times I was showing that against these guys. I mean, like Zero and like Henry and like all these guys, they're good players, and I was sure. uh, I was able to kind of like out with them and you know evade the reticle and stuff. So I'm just kind of kind of glad that I got to to have it on stream because uh, I, I started playing Neo Splash like as Clockwork kind of got like inactive because like players not being able to play anymore and kind of stuff like that. So mm -hmm. a lot of my play with that weapon has been kind of not public. So to be able to kind of showcase it and hopefully the stream saw some cool kills, but yeah, uh, oh, sure. we did. It's a, yeah, we it's a unique did. weapon. So yeah, yeah I, I really, uh, I'm kind of glad that I just got to show that out there. So maybe inspire some people to, to pick it up or oh, what, totally. but yeah. Yeah. I think right. that's great. Um, and I think that's it for us. Unless we want to pull any more players for, uh, for interviews. Oh, oh, oh they okay. dipped. Mm -hmm. I well, bet. Oh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. I believe we can end with our little teaser for Beacon. And be sure to sign up as soon as we're I just realized opened. what you're wearing, by the way. Yeah, it's a, it's a Care Bear. <laughs> I was making eye contact, it's and I was like, wait, what's... <laughs> oh, it's to... cold in here, okay? <laughs> That's why we had the hand warmers. Yeah, I didn't yes. even realize. That's what you guys were yeah. shaking. Yeah, the hand warmers, because if you shake them, they get hotter, yeah. yeah. I, I got two sets of them, so I got, like, Tetra hand warmers right now. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. My name is Melissa Asset Sunshine. I've been joined all day by Hangman. And, of course, 
Hitzel here <laughs> with his first win for Long Island Splat. So thank you guys. Stay tuned for this little teaser for Beacon, and we'll see you all in a couple months. Peace. Take care. They might be able to recover just in time. Oh, they do lose control with two points Please. up to go. Oh, oh. Please, no. Don't, I don't want to do this. Only a little bit of a push along the side here. Three people down, about to be four people down. No, Never this mind. is my you fault. That guy. It is all my fault. <laughs> this is their opportunity. They have one shot at this. Everyone is on the point right now, but there's just so much opposition. They can't what the flank they, they don't have anybody near the zone. They put three people on that back side. This double inkjet isn't going to touch the zone. I don't think these specials are going to do anything.